the 990 Pro and this Solidyne P44 Pro, the best drives you could buy. But there is a new guy around the block. This here. This is so much better than any of these. Are my graphs wrong or something's broken? Because this is single-handedly the fastest SSD I have ever tried on this channel. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. So if you're doing a white belt, this crucial T705 is going to be a standout on your PC. Let me show you some of these benchmarks here. Firstly, we're going to look at sequential read and write speeds, which aren't particularly helpful in a real world scenario because not a lot of people transfer sequential files like that across and most likely something else is going to be the bottleneck in your system. But you can see that the T705 2 terabyte one, what I have here, is literally double the speed what we get from the Solidyne P44 Pro. And even the fastest Gen 5 that I've tested previously, the A Data Legend 972TB one, we are 30% faster on this crucial drive. That's the read speeds. The write speeds, similar thing continues. This one reaches 12,746 megabytes per second. That's 12.7 gigabytes per second sequential write speed. And we had over 14 gigabytes per second read speeds sequential on this drive. Pretty much double what we have the maximum bandwidth on PCIe Gen 4. And you can see the Kingston KC 3004 terabyte version, which is the fastest Gen 4 I have tried, is about 45% slower, which is a huge gap in performance for this crucial drive here. But it's crucial that you understand that sequential read and write speeds aren't the ones that actually give you performance. The random read and write speeds are much more important, especially if you're a creator and you're using an OS drive or a project drive or a cache drive or an archive drive. That's the performances that you need to look at. Would anything change in there? Let's take a look. Firstly, quick system drive benchmark. That's just the benchmark if you would use like a secondary drive in your system and you use maybe lightweight files in there, some photos, some files and opening and closing them and how fast are the read and write speeds, random little read and writes all over the place, but not too heavy on the drive or the workflow. And you can see, boom, on top of the shards, the best one we have ever tried. About 23% faster than the fastest Gen 4 drive and about 10% faster than the other Gen 5 drives that I have tried. Very impressive. Let's move on to data drive benchmark. So that's when we're storing a bit larger files on the SSD. And how does the drive handle that as a data drive? You can see right on top of the charts. Now here, you can see that the Gen 4 and Gen 5 drive, there's a huge difference on the top end, the Gen 4 drives, and then the Gen 5 drives, they go to another world. As you can see, the Corsair MP700, the Legend 970 from Adata, and this Crucial one. The Crucial one still on top of the charts and beats the other Gen 5 drives about 6%, and the best of Gen 4 NVMEs about 27%. Impressive, but we're not done. Full system drive benchmark. This here is now if you're using this drive as an operating system or as a project drive where you're reading loads of different random files all over the drive and you're trying to get the best performance out there. So drives that perform well in this test are the drives for operating systems or project drives for creators. But also check out the consistency test in a minute when you're using project drives and you're using large files or assets on this drive and you're reading as well as little files, also very large files, your big red raw files or big files, then the consistency test also comes into play. But here we can see this crucial T705 is about 25 to 30% faster than these drives down there. That Solidine P44 Pro and Samsung 990 Pro, they were impressive, but not anymore because this guy is around. About 30% faster than the Samsung, that's insane. And you can see quite a bit faster than also the other Gen 5 drives. We have the Adata and Corsair ones, about 12% faster on this one. Again, very, very impressive. Now, 
The most impressive of all is this drive consistency test. This is the most intensive and most ridiculous test on SSD. And this is not really for most people. There is only 0.5% people who would use this type of workflow where we're absolutely saturating the whole drive. We're gonna be filling the drive more than three times we're writing over 20 terabytes of data on it and the test lasts about 24 hours we're absolutely testing how does this drive keep up with the read and write speeds over a very long period of time and when absolutely hammering this like there's no tomorrow and look at the results of this this is insane usually drives that perform well on this test are the drives that have DRAM and larger capacity so if you take the same drive with a larger capacity it's usually going to perform better here this crucial t705 is 43 percent faster than the second place and the second place has double the capacity and double the DRAM what we have in here. That's absolutely insane. When you look at the craft, you can see that this guy is a whole another level. It's like, boom, boom, level up, we're somewhere else. This is very, very impressive. And why is this so important? Well, if you're a creator and perhaps using this drive for your operating system or project drive, you can know that there is nothing that performs as good as this one. And you can get up to 45, 40% increase in performance in opening the programs, working with assets, loading files or having cache files and everything on there is absolutely insane. There is nothing like this drive on the market, or at least I haven't tested anything that's out there, which kind of blows my mind. But there's one very important thing that often in SSD reviews gets overlooked, which is the terabyte written spec. And I'm glad to tell you that this one is just the same as any of the other ones on the market. We don't get anything particularly extra or we don't get anything less. We're just scoring the usual what we get from Samsung 990 Pro, Western Digital SN 850, which is kind of the benchmark, which is 600 terabytes per one terabyte. And the two terabytes capacities double it and then the four terabyte doubles it again. So up to 2400 terabytes written when you get the four terabyte model. So if you're a creator, I highly recommend getting not the one terabyte model, but higher ones. But at the same time, the one terabyte model is very, very good for your operating system because you don't need that much space for your operating system and one terabyte is plenty for that. Now, there are a few caveats with this SSD. As much as this is the absolute best that you can buy right now, there's a few things you need to know. Firstly, this SSD is double-sided, which means that when you're getting this, you can get this with or without the heatsink. I highly recommend getting it with the heatsink if you plan to put it on top of your GPU when it's higher there. If it goes underneath your GPU, make sure you buy it with this without the heatsink so you're not going to be interrupting the GPU because GPU is not going to fit on top of this if you've got this installed on your motherboard. And if you've got a white build, this white limited edition, is really, really nice. And you can get the black version as well that's out there. The heatsink is not necessarily needed, but make sure that your motherboard has the heatsink on double-sided. Some of the Asus motherboards, like the Asus ProArt motherboards, for example, they don't have heatsink underneath the SSD, which means that this SSD might throttle in the performance because there's no cooling going on underneath. And it's often very, very hot in there. There's no airflow going underneath. So in that case, make sure you get this with a heatsink because then some of the heat gets dissipated on top of the heatsink and then it gets cooled down. When testing this drive in the consistency test, for example, this drive gets extremely hot, like very, very hot to the touch because obviously that's very intense workflow. How you can combat this is with good airflow. So when having this one, make sure that you've got good airflow from the front of the case to the back of the case. So you're blowing some airflow over this so you're not kind of choking the performance of this. I saw quite a big change in temperatures when just putting a fan next to it to getting some airflow on it because I'm testing it with an open test bench. It got very, very hot, but then having just a little fan that blows generally very slow air over made quite a big difference. So bear that in mind. What about the price? Now, this is something that you're going to have to pay quite high box for and where this drive might not be for everybody. If you want the absolute best and money is no problem 
for you, this is definitely worth buying. At the same time, for those who are looking to be more on a budget, then the Gen 4 drives there are still performing better for your money. So if you're looking best bang for buck, it's those guys behind there. The 990 Pro and the P44 Pro from Solidime. Top end drives, very, very good still for read and write speeds, random ones, and you can get them quite a bit cheaper, often on a deal there as well. So I'm gonna leave them linked in the description below. But for those who just wanna live absolutely on the edge and wanna get the Tech Notice uh, SSD, Tech Notice Design SSD, this is the one. I don't know why this was also in the, the box. We have the Crucial X9. This is a portable SSD and goes up to 1050 megabytes per second read and write speeds, which means it's a 10 gigabit kind of interface with this one. This guy, is so, so small. I have never seen an external SSD so small. This is smaller than your bank card. It's very, very tiny. I mean, even this SSD kind of looks big and thick compared to this one. I don't know, I just thought I'll let you know because um, this worked really, really well with my Blackmagic Pocket Cin Cinema camera there. And the Samsung T9 Opter for some reason stops recording after a while or randomly. This one hasn't yet, so I'm quite impressed with this tiny little guy. When copying files from this to the computer, I got about 850, something like that, megabytes per second. Not quite 1000, even though the interface allowed it to go there. But if you're looking for very portable small drive, I'm gonna leave this in the description below as well. Oh, and I forgot very important thing about this crucial drive. Even though those being very, very expensive, if you are a creator in Adobe Creative Cloud, you get one month for free. So if you're doing a full ProArt system, for example, you buy in the ProArt GPU, you buy in the ProArt motherboard, then having this drive in there, that is a great idea because you're gonna get extra one month for free there as well, which you should take off the price if you're already paying for Creative Cloud. That's great news. And this crucial T705, is the new benchmark to beat in terms of SSD performance. Nothing like it out there. You know what else is nothing like that out there? The best bank for work PC build guides in the video description below. If you wanna build yourself a PC as a creator and you're wondering which one is the best one for you, whatever budget you have, there's things down there for you to check out completely free. Just check them out. I'll explain everything down there. Even if you've never built yourself a PC before, you can follow these guides and build yourself an absolute beast and save money. Go on, check them out. And if you do want to reach out to me, check out me next and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.